I am a renewable engineer and have been working on the island of Kauai for the last five years to designing solar and energy storage projects. I adore the island, not only because it's rugged and gorgeous, but also because of the community's harmony with nature. On Earth Day in 2022, I joined a community building event at Alacoco Fish Pond. It's a sacred site for the island, established about 600 years ago to provide a sustainable source of food for the community. Local leaders asked volunteers to join a welcome ceremony where we shared aloud our purpose and then asked for permission before we entered the site. I think far too often in renewable development, we can come in headstrong, ready to build without a deep understanding of the community's history and needs or a deep understanding of our own reasons for being there. When we shared our whys, our purposes, almost everyone shared that they wanted to leave the world better for your future generations, for their kids. And similarly, my why for being in the renewable industry is my son, Mohi. One of my joys is speaking to his classes about renewables. They ask incredibly insightful questions and just give me so much hope for the future. My son will also offer words of encouragement afterwards, like, Dad, you can talk about more complicated stuff next time. You kept it a little basic. <laughs> a little basic is also the same critiques that he has for my dad jokes. <laughs> Today, I'll be talking about Kauai's motivations, some science, and their journey to 100% renewable. If I lost you by uttering the word science, don't fret, we'll talk plenty about people and feelings as well. Back in 2011, Kauai had some of the highest electricity rates in the Hawaiian Islands at 46 cents per kilowatt hour. For reference, that's almost three times the national average. And this meant that a Kauai family could have been quite startled when opening their electric bill. Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, or KIUC, was motivated to reduce their rates for the community. At the time, less than 10% of their generation was coming from renewables, and they had been shipping in, at great cost, oil for their generation plants. The volatility of oil prices also meant that it was extremely hard for families and businesses to budget appropriately. They could have seen as much as a 30% swing in their monthly electric rates, adding stress to families already trying to scrape together enough money to pay their bills. KIUC acted nimbly, and in the span of a decade, they went from some of the highest rates in Hawaii to the lowest. How did they do this? By transforming their grid from oil-based to one that harnesses the sun. I know that you Colorado people out there love your farm to table, <laughs> and you can think of solar generation similarly, locally harvested on Kauai. By 2021, Kauai made it to 70% renewable. For comparison, in the entirety of the US, renewable generation accounts for 21% of total generation. To really put that paltry number in perspective, it's about the same percentage of my dad jokes that'll score an above average grade on my son's rubric. And honestly, that's probably an overestimation. <laughs> All right, before we dive into Kauai's renewable transformation, we need to talk some science, specifically frequency and the massive stakes that this parameter can have on people's livelihoods. Like any operator, KIUC plays a fun yet stressful game of trying to balance their generation with their load. When generation and load are balanced harmoniously, the frequency or heartbeat of the grid operates at 60 hertz. So surprisingly, Texas and Kauai are quite similar. They're both islands, at least electrically speaking, since most of Texas isn't connected to neighbor states' transmission lines, and they cannot import power during electrical emergencies. The Texas grid made news during a severe winter storm in 2021. I mean, the weather was so bad that Bucky's, the 24-7 Disneyland of Texas convenience stores, even had to shut down. My family in the Dallas area experienced rolling blackouts for days, and they huddled around their fireplace to make it through the night. Power plants failed due to weather conditions and tripped offline. 
all while demand spiked because people needed heat. This combination of decreasing supply and increasing demand caused the frequency to plummet. Ultimately, the state's operator was forced to cut power to millions of people to bring that frequency back up and restore grid stability, all because the frequency dropped below a mere 59.4 hertz. If that drop continued for more than nine minutes, the grid could have collapsed entirely, leaving much of Texas without power for weeks. This balancing act of matching load and generation is even more challenging on Kauai, since we are operating with many variable renewable sources. All while trying to keep frequency, this all-important heartbeat, steady. One of the most important problems Kauai had to address during its transformation was accounting for times when the sun doesn't shine. Looking at this super scientific sketch, we see that solar produces the most around noon. This production doesn't match up when, with, when people use the most power. That's because load increases in the mornings as folks get ready for work, and then it peaks in the evenings as they come home and turn on their ACs and appliances. As engineers, we centered empathy in trying to find a solution that would work for the island. Listening to KIUC's pain points, it became clear that they needed energy storage strategies to deliver renewable energy during their peak loads. They also needed an incredibly responsive and resilient system because loads and frequency could change in an instant. This led to development of solar and energy storage peaker plants that came online in Kauai. These couple solar panels, batteries, and a responsive control system. We are looking at an actual day of Kauai's energy mix from January. Using solar and energy storage, KIUC is able to charge batteries during prime solar hours and then discharge them to meet their peak loads, significantly reducing their oil usage. Here's what that same day would have looked like without solar and energy storage. That gray area, the oil area, is just so much larger. All right, I'm going to play optometrist and switch back to the actual day and ask you which one looks better. It's also really important to remember that all of these solar and energy storage plants serve Kauai's community. They are receiving cleaner, lower cost energy, and over the course of a year, all of the solar and energy storage on island is displacing about 550,000 barrels of oil, or the equivalent of 46 olympic size swimming pools. For these systems, batteries are stored in souped-up shipping containers fitted with fire protection and cooling systems. The largest of these plants is 20 megawatts with 100 megawatt hours of energy storage all in 32 shipping containers. That's enough power for about 2,600 homes for five hours, or perhaps one spectacular Usher Super Bowl concert. <laughs> I mean, what an artist. <laughs> so for solar sites in Kauai, the land often doubles for sheep grazing or growing taro. The sheep on this particular site take their vegetation management very seriously. Kauai, incredibly, is on track to be 100% renewable by 2033. Of course, this transition has been tough at times. Any transition comes with challenges as we learn a new way of being, and we are learning so much along the way. We continue to tune our controls and update our equipment as we learn to operate a predominantly solar-powered grid. The chief of operations for KIUC, Brad Rockwell, endearingly calls all of this learning real-time modeling. Kauai's renewable transformation is vital for all of us to understand because we won't get there on the mainland without a bold willingness to innovate. Kauai shows us that we can blend empathy for the community along with some science to harness our natural resources. And this process is absolutely transferable. Reflecting back on my why, it's all for my son, Mohi. One of the shared principles at Alacoco Fish Pond and in renewables 
is this idea of taking care of the people that we treasure the most, even after we're gone. I've long joked morbidly with Mohi, likely scarring him in the process, that I expect a Viking funeral with him setting my ship ablaze via a fire arrow. Because he is so incredibly precious, he'll share that he's working on his archery skills. But that probably isn't the image that I should leave him with. I recently visited a hydropower site on Kauai that had been in operation for over 100 years and got to geek out on all of its old electrical analog glory. In the future, I'd like to envision Mohi being able to visit renewable sites that I've worked on with that kind of staying power. And I really think that would top any awesome Viking ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>